crew there last night, and presiding was the commanding officer of the Yorktown, Captain Pipefield. Good evening, gentlemen. I know that you share my pleasure at our ability to host such distinguished guests as we have tonight. And I wonder, as long as we're thinking about it, why they took the long way around to get here. <laughs> I will introduce them individually, and then I think they will each uh, have a word to say. First of all, at the end of the table, Colonel Frank Borman, the cleanest shaven astronaut of them all. <laughs> Although his compatriots will indicate that he couldn't, uh, doesn't have to shave anyway. <laughs> Next, Captain Jim Lovell, who says after a few days with the Air Force, he's glad to be back with the Navy. <laughs> And next, Major Bill Anders, an escapee from the Navy, who claims the moon is made of American cheese. Thank you very much. Uh, I can understand why you all like the Navy. We don't have many candlelight dinners in the airport, but I... <laughs> I, I really don't know what, what I can say in a situation like this. We're very grateful for your participation. You stayed out here over Christmas, and uh, you picked us up right on time, and uh, you treated us royally. I guess the most effective words are just plain thank you, and uh, I appreciate all your contribution. Really, I, we uh, a lot of the attention gets focused on the flight crew, but there's a great, a great vast re reservoir of people that support us, and. Uh, I guess we all we all did this, and we appreciate your help very much. Thank you. I appreciate being back home again. I've been living with two Air Force men for a week now, and uh, their constant concern was, gee whiz, we're going back and landing in that big Pacific Ocean, and uh, you sure the Navy's going to be there? Well, about three years ago, Frank and I were in the same situation, a little spacecraft called Gemini, and he asked me the same question three years ago, and I said, the Navy will always pick us up, will always take care of us, and we've been right all the time, and I really appreciate uh, seeing the good work that you've done, and I think it's a very good job, and I appreciate being here. I'd like to correct one thing. I wasn't worried about landing here near the ship. I was just worried about hitting any ocean. <laughs> Jim was the navigator. <laughs> and he and I went to the same school, so I know. <laughs> I'd like to reiterate what uh, Frank was saying, is that uh, the recovery forces, in our opinion, are as important a, a link in the Apollo program as the flight crews, and we just want to thank you all for a job well done. Well, that was the uh, remarks of the astronauts. Borman, Lovell, and Anders at that candlelight dinner last night in the wardroom of the Yorktown. They're not the most loquacious uh, gentlemen in the world, but it's perfectly obvious that everything they say comes straight from the heart. And That's the kind of uh, good-natured, sort of sophomoric ribbing that you hear in wardrooms and officers' clubs, I guess, all over the world. Oh, I'm sure it is, and uh, and it's uh, it's while it may be sophomoric, around, it certainly is genuine, and it strikes a very uh, responsive chord in the heart of a good many Americans, especially officers and men aboard the Yorktown. They, uh, the astronauts, have been making much the same comment in their uh, other appearances on the carrier uh, after they finished their their uh, appearance last night in the wardroom. They came up to the hangar deck. And there was a ceremony here in which they uh, said very much the same thing and uh, told the men of the Yorktown how much they appreciated the fine job they had done in connection with the recovery. They seemed especially concerned uh, that the 1,600 men aboard the Yorktown had missed Christmas. And, of course, the men aboard the Arlington also had missed Christmas at home because they had to get on station here in the Pacific early and wait around for the astronauts to come down. And a number of times on the ship, they've, uh, they've thanked the men especially for being away from home at Christmas to take part in this mission. In fact, it seems to have been very much on their minds. They uh, sounded almost apologetic at a couple of points that they had been responsible for depriving uh, so many men of Christmas with their uh, homes, uh, with their loved ones at home. 
a lot of men on the flight deck waiting around for the astronauts to come up from below from their brunch with the uh, petty officers, chief petty officers. And uh, there are photographers and reporters on board uh, waiting for the takeoff for Honolulu. One of the uh, most important appearances that, that they made last night was that, that ceremony on the hangar deck. And in connection with it, astronaut James Lovell, who was a captain in the U.S. Navy, presided at re-enlistment ceremonies for seven members of the Yorktown's crew who, who were signing up for uh, further turns. Here is Captain Fifield at the Rostrum podium. For others, it ended with the sound of the sonic boom. But for most of us, we saw the beautiful sight of the parachuting to within a two and a half miles of the ship. It is now my distinct pleasure to present to you our guest for this evening, Colonel Frank Borman. Captain James Lovell. Major Phil Anders. Well, that was uh, just a portion of what happened last night on the uh, hangar deck of the Yorktown. Uh, back on the flight deck now, three levels above the hangar deck. It appears that uh, the preparations are just about complete for the uh, embarkation of the astronauts aboard one of those Navy cod planes uh, for the catapulting off the deck of the Yorktown and the flight to Hawaii. The astronauts now coming on the flight deck, Colonel Borman, Captain Lovell, Major Anders, escorted by Captain Fifield, the commanding officer, and behind him, Commander William Parks, the executive officer of the carrier. They have on those blue uh, flight uh, coveralls that they've worn almost since uh, they finished their medical examinations yesterday. That's been their dress aboard the ship. They are uh, being surrounded by uh, photographers, both professional and uh, crew members who have every sort of camera uh, to record uh, that the astronauts were on their ship and that they were taking part in this uh, historic ceremony. They're going to the rail now uh, on the starboard side, the right side of the ship and are uh, going to wave to the crew members of the communication ship Arlington as it passes along the side. The crewmen on the Arlington have been somewhat isolated through all this. The ship is not as big and doesn't have all the comforts that the aircraft carrier does. Uh, there have been some uh, television tapes made on the, uh, on the Yorktown and sent over to the Arlington to make life uh, a little more pleasant. And now they'll get a chance to see the three astronauts who came down uh, and were kept in touch uh, during the final part of their flight, uh, partly by the communications efforts of the ship Arlington. The Arlington is a converted aircraft carrier herself, uh, and she can still accommodate helicopters on deck, uh, but no fixed wing aircraft, uh, because uh, a large part of the deck has been given over to those large communications masts, uh, which are quite visible uh, uh, when the Arlington is in uh, close range. For the most part, during this cruise, the Arlington has been hovering on the horizon. Uh, yesterday, while we were making almost full speed for Pearl Harbor, the Arlington was about 10 miles off the port bow, just barely visible uh, under cloudy skies and keeping right up with us. Uh, she also can make good time when she boards it on. And yesterday was the first time that the aircraft carrier has uh, approach anything like full speed. For the most part, during the past week, we've just been uh, sailing uh, slowly around here in the uh, center of the Pacific, far from from any sort of land, uh, simply waiting for Apollo 7, Apollo 8 to come aboard. Now they're saluting the Arlington. The Arlington is uh, rendering military honors as she passes, and the tension on deck as the Arlington, we can't see her right now, but uh, it's she approaching from out of the, the starboard bow. We saw the astronauts saluting just a moment ago. Customary when uh, another ship of the Navy uh, comes alongside, the water is passed on the loudspeaker system, attention on deck, and salute. And uh, the astronauts did salute, since all of them are officers of the United States Armed Forces. All of them are wearing 
wearing uh, military caps provided by Captain Whitefield with scrambled eggs on the visors. Although uh, they themselves, uh, while officers of the armed forces, are not in active military status at the moment. Their, their official status is uh, on leave, I think, or on, a, on temporary assignment to the National Space Agency. Two helicopters are circling the Arlington and the Yorktown, uh, partly for ceremonial reasons and partly for operational reasons. Whenever an aircraft carrier uh, launches planes from its catapult, helicopters uh, fly around the area just in case anything goes wrong and they have to uh, rush in and pick up uh, pick up the passengers if the plane goes in the drink. 